Many of you have asked me to do this, so let's get started. Today I'm going to show you how I approach color correction with the Osmo Pocket 3 or any camera that shoots in a normal Rex 9 picture profile. I'm not going to talk about D-Log M, Log or HLG profiles because it's a bit more complicated. I'm just going to show you how to balance out your normal Rex 9 footage as quickly and effectively as possible. I'm going to use footage from the Osmo Pocket 3, but again, the approach that I'm going to show you today will work with pretty much any camera as long as it wasn't shot in a vlog profile. With that said, let's start. So first of all, what is the point of doing color correction? What's the difference between color correction and color grading? Color correction is all about fixing problems in your shot, such as exposure, contrast, white balance, and saturation, whereas color grading is all about being artistic and creating a specific look. It's not as scientific as color correction. You're not meant to fix anything, but rather push the colors around and create an artistic look. So color correction is all about correcting and balancing your image, whereas color grading is all about taking that corrected image and pushing it around to create an artistic look. I'm not going to talk about color grading today because it's a bit more complicated, but you should always remember two things. First, color correction always comes before color grading because you always want to have a good starting point to build upon and manipulate the image to your liking and create a specific look. Second, I recommend doing basic color correction to every single shot. It doesn't mean you have to correct anything, it just means that you have to inspect the shot and make sure that everything looks right. So anyway, let's jump into my computer. I'm going to walk you through the steps of doing basic color correction. All right, so I'm using DaVinci Resolve, which is pretty much the best color correction and color grading software on the market, and it's actually completely free. I have the studio version, but the free version has pretty much the majority of the features of the studio version. However, the steps that I'm going to show you today will work with pretty much any editing software like Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, LumaFusion, CapCut, etc. So here I have three clips on the timeline from the Osmo Pocket 3 shot in a normal picture profile, no log or anything like that. Let's start with this clip. The first thing I always do is adjust the exposure. I think it's the best thing to do, always starting with adjusting the exposure to get a good baseline. And then you can move on to adjusting the contrast, saturation, white balance, etc. So I'm going to name this node exposure. And nodes are basically like layers in Premiere Pro and also Final Cut Pro. I can create as many of them as I want to by pressing Option S on the keyboard on the Mac. Now, the way I judge proper exposure is either by using my eyes, which is not the most accurate way, or by using the waveform scope, which is much more accurate. I'm not going to go too in-depth on how to use the waveform scope, but all you really need to know is that zero here represents the darkest parts of the image, basically the shadows, and you never want to go below zero because you're going to lose information. So, for example, if I'm going to put down the exposure here, you'll see the image pretty much breaks apart. Now on the opposite side, we have the highlights here at 1000 and you also don't want to go above 1000 to not crush the highlights and lose vital information. So if I'm going to push the image up, you see we're basically crushing the highlights and losing information. You basically want the bulk of the image between 0 and 1000, which is pretty much what's happening here. Therefore, I don't really need to adjust exposure and I can move on to the next step, which is adjusting the contrast. Contrast basically creates higher separation between highlights and shadows. So let me give you an example with this contrast tool in here. If I'm going to push it up you'll see that the brightest parts of the image getting further away from the darkest parts. Again, I'm gonna push it higher as you can see. The higher I push it, the more separation we have between the highlights and shadows. Now, it's not really necessary to adjust the contrast or to add contrast. Some of you might prefer having a flat image, but personally, I prefer adding some contrast to my shots and also I prefer adding it with the color wheels like lift, gamma, and gain, which stand for shadows, mittens, and highlights rather than using the contrast slider but if you want something a bit easier just use the contrast slider so with the lift with the shadows i'm going to bring them slightly down and here i see a point actually like a part of the image that's almost at zero if i'm going to take the qualifier i can see that it's this sign in here don't really care about this sign so i can pretty much push this part slightly lower with the lift 
adjustment. I'm gonna go down to about, let's do minus 0.2, just slight adjustment. At the same time, I can slightly bring up the highlights. As you can see, it's not really at 1000. I can still stretch the image out if I want to. So I'm going to bring up the gain, which are basically the highlights about here 1.03 and also i'm going to bring down slightly the gamma which basically pushes the mid-tones lower and creates higher separation between the darkest and brightest parts of the image something like this i think looks pretty good this is the before a bit flat and boring and now this is the after. All right, the next step is adjusting the white balance. So this adjustment, you basically want to make the colors as neutral as possible, basically the same way they looked when you were the location shooting it. I think this step is really important, especially if you're planning to color grade later on or adding a lot because you want to have a good neutral look first before pushing around the image is going to make color grading much easier. The way I like to judge if my image is properly white balanced is with vector scope. I'm not going to go too in depth on how it works, but basically a vector scope is a scope that shows a visual representation of the colors in your shot. This blob here in the middle basically shows the colors in my shot and where the colors are leaning towards. Here we have the colors. We have red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. And if I look at my shot, I can see a lot of yellow, which shows on the vector scope. And also I can see a lot of blue in here and some blue in here, which also shows up in the vector scope. Now to get accurate white balance, you basically want this blob to be in the middle of the vector scope. Not 100% in the middle, but mostly in the middle. At this point, this shot actually leans more towards yellow, as you can see, and also more towards green, meaning that I need to subtract some yellow and also some green. And I'm going to do it with these tools in here, the temperature slider and also the tint slider. It's much easier this way. You can do it with the offset, but it's a bit more complicated in my opinion. So I'm just going to do it with the temperature and tint sliders. First of all, I'm going to add a node, label it white balance and I'm going to start pushing the tint slider towards blue just to subtract some yellow maybe something like this and now if you look here I can also push the image towards red magenta slightly to make it a bit more balanced so I'm going to take the tint slider and push it up to somewhere around here I think. Now if you have something white in the frame it's going to be much easier to adjust this especially if you using DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to zoom in in here and I have here this guy with a white t-shirt and if I'm going to hover over his t-shirt with the qualifier you can see that the circle in the waveform is right in the center meaning that this shot is pretty much correctly white balanced. If I'm going to disable this node I'm going to take the picker you'll see that it leans more towards yellow and green now, whereas with the node enabled, it's pretty much in the center. Now, the final step in the color correction process is adding some saturation. It's not really necessary. Again, it's up to you to decide if you want more saturation or not. In this case, I am going to add some saturation because this image looks a bit flat, but you don't really have to do this. I think white balance and adjusting the exposure is far more important than adding some saturation. However, I would always recommend using a scope to see if the image is not over saturated. You basically never want this blob in here go above these squares because if you go close to these squares, these colors here, that means that the image is way too saturated and you want to be somewhere in the middle. Actually, I'm going to disable this uh, two times zoom and you'll see right now that this image is not really that saturated. I actually do need to add some saturation because it's pretty far away from these squares. So you want to be somewhere between the center and these color squares. So I'm going to add another node, label it saturation and I'm going to use this uh, saturation slider, push it up to somewhere, I think around here. Let's do like 67%. This is the before and after. All right, so let's see what I've done to this shot so far. I started with adjusting the contrast, then adjusted the white balance, and finally I added some saturation. This is the before and after. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's move on to the next shot. First, I'm going to start with adjusting the exposure. So let me open the waveform in here. I'm definitely underexposed. So I can take this uh, offset tool, which basically pushes the exposure for the whole image rather than gain just for the highlights, uh, gamma just for the midtones, and lift just for the shadows. The offset tool pushes the whole image around equally. So I'm going to slightly increase the offset to about here. I think here it looks much better, but now it looks really flat, meaning that I need to add some contrast. So I'm going to add another node, and actually I'm going to label this node exposure. This one is going to be contrast, and I'm going to add some contrast with the color wheels again. I'm going to push down the lift to separate the shadows from the highlights. I'm also going to push down the gamma slightly and increase the highlights. But again, I don't want to go above 1000 to not clip my highlights. So I'm bringing down slightly to about, I would say 1.02, slightly bring down the midtones. See how it looks before and after, and before and after. Actually, I can increase the contrast slightly more. So I'm going to bring down the midtones. It's all about playing around with the slider, seeing what really looks the best. And I think somewhere around here looks great. All right, next thing I'm going to do is add another node and adjust the white balance. I'm going to name this node white balance. And again, I'm going to open the vector scope and enlarge the image, the vector scope, just to make it a bit easier to see everything. And as you can see, this shot is leaning towards Bloom and Cyan, but it's supposed to because this is sky and this is water. But still, if I'm going to hover in here, you'll see that this white point is actually also leaning towards blue and slightly green as well. So I can kind of push this image towards yellow and magenta to make it a bit more white balanced. So I'm going to do it with this slider again, just push it around to about Let's do like 250, yes. And also, I'm going to slightly push it towards magenta. Maybe like four on the magenta. Slightly subtract actually the yellow. I think it's a bit too much. Maybe something like this. And now as you can see, if I hover with the qualifier in here at this white point, the circle is pretty much right in the middle. Again, this is the before, leaning more towards blue and green. And after, it looks slightly more color accurate. And finally, I'm going to add some saturation. I'm going to use the saturation slider. Just increase it slightly to somewhere around here. Let me disable this. Two times zoom. I can go a bit higher with the saturation. Let's go like 70, 72. And I think I'm pretty much done. As you can see, you go through color correction really quickly once you know how to do it. It takes about one minute per clip or something like that. So first of all, I adjusted the exposure. Then I added some contrast. Then I corrected the white balance. And finally, added some saturation. This is the before and after. All right, let's move on to the next and final shot. I'm gonna put it to the hero frame in here. And I'm going to add four nodes right away and label them as well. Now let's open the waveform and make sure that we are properly exposed. And in this case, I actually overexposed. My highlights are completely crushed in here and I can't really bring it down with the offset because once you crush your highlights in camera, it's pretty much dead the information is lost, especially when shooting in a Lex 709 picture profile. So I don't think I'm really going to touch the exposure. Maybe I can slightly bring it down just to bring the whole image slightly down, but it's not really going to save any detail in the highlights or anything like that. So I think somewhere around here looks good before and after a really minor adjustment. Next, I'm going to add some contrast and I can definitely push down the shadows just slightly, maybe like minus 0.2. Let's do minus 0.1. Also, I'm going to slightly bring down the midtones to somewhere around here. And I'm not looking at the waveform anymore. I'm looking at the shot just to make sure it looks how I want it to look. I think like minus 0.2 looks good. And also with the highlights, actually, I'm not going to touch the highlights at all because they are completely crushed in this shot. All right, next thing, I'm going to adjust the white balance. And here it's going to be really easy because the wall is supposed to be white. So let's open the waveform, the vector scope, sorry. And I'm going to enable two times zoom. Just hover my picker on this white wall. And as you can see, the white balance is pretty much 
dead on here, but I think I'm still going to slightly push it towards blue just like by 100 points here and also slightly more towards green maybe like minus four on the green all right i think now this shot looks good this is the before and after a really minor difference but it's definitely making everything look a bit more balanced okay finally i'm going to adjust the saturation and here it's a bit tricky because as you can see if i'm going to disable this the reds are almost above the square and i said it's a good rule to follow to not go above this and if i look at the image the reds are much more saturated than the rest of the colors so i need to somehow fix that so first of all let me add saturation just to bring out bring up the overall saturation of the image i think somewhere around here looks good but now as you can see the reds are crushed pretty much it looks awful and to fix this i'm actually going to use a tool called hsl basically hue saturation and luminance and you can adjust the saturation for a specific color or change the hue of a specific color or the luminance of a specific color in this case i only want to adjust the saturation of the red colors so i'm going to use this speaker in here the qualifier sorry and i'm going to click on the red door and it's going to create points in here and also if you can see here this graph shows me that the saturation is mostly happening in the reds which is basically what we are seeing on this uh, preview window so i'm going to take this point and bring it down until i'm happy i think somewhere around here looks good such a big difference this is the before the reds were much too saturated whereas these colors in here the oranges and everything in here was less saturated and now everything pretty much looks equally saturated all right so let's see what we've done to this shot first of all we adjusted the exposure just slightly then we added some contrast with the color wheels then we adjusted the white balance and finally we adjusted the saturation and corrected the over saturated uh, red colors in the shot this is the before and after before and after So this is pretty much how I do basic color correction with Osmo Pocket Rim or any camera. I try to keep it as simple as possible to get through correcting the clips as quickly as possible. However, another important thing you must consider before even starting with color correction is if you are shooting with the correct camera settings because if you're going to mess up your exposure and white balance in camera it's going to be near impossible to fix it in post-production so first get the correct camera settings and then it's going to be really easy to do everything in post-production when it comes to color correction and also color grading also if you're going to shoot on automatic settings with any camera it will be very hard to perform basic color correction because the exposure and color correction will shift all over the place that's why i actually recommend to always stick to manual camera settings as much as possible at least you can actually get by using automatic exposure but i think at least you should lock the white balance to have consistent colors throughout your footage i'm going to make a tutorial soon on how to manually expose and white balance pocket tree footage but i've made a bunch of these videos with other cameras so you can look them up in the meantime on my channel or i'm going to leave some of them down below anyhow hope you found this video to be informative and useful if you have any questions let me know down below and i guess i'll see you again soon thanks for watching